It's Jim Sheets of a Tech Spot here, and this is the HTC 10. It's the first truly compelling smartphone from HTC in a number of years, and it could really give Samsung and LG a run for their money in the high-end Android smartphone space. I'm going to start this review by talking about the camera on the HTC 10 because I think that's something that we're all looking forward to from this new smartphone considering the disappointments that HTC brought with the One M9. This camera is much improved compared to the M9. We're looking at a 12 megapixel sensor, the same sensor we've seen in the Nexus 5X and 6P, paired with an f1.8 lens, optical image stabilization, and laser assisted autofocus. I was certainly impressed with some of the photos that the HTC 10 captures. HTC has placed a strong focus on accuracy. So if you take photos on this camera and you view it on a color corrected display, it will look pretty similar to the scene that you were trying to capture. However, with the Samsung Galaxy S7 and the LG G5, both of these companies have gone for a different approach in that they post-process their images to look a little bit better than the real life scene, add a little bit more vibrance, a bit more contrast, a bit more saturation, and that produces photos that generally look better than what the HTC 10 provides and are certainly more shareable. So I think there's a little bit of a contrast in philosophies between HTC and Samsung and LG at the moment. That's not to say that the HTC 10 produces bad images, but I just think that you might get a better result straight up from the Galaxy S7. That said, there are some other compelling features to the HTC 10's camera. We're seeing raw capture in the manual mode, so we can very easily go in and add that extra bit of saturation or contrast if we want. I'm seeing pretty decent low light performance. It's probably not as good as the LG G5, which is a little bit of a disappointment considering how good this camera's hardware seems to be for low light performance. I think there's a few issues with the lens there, but in general, this camera can actually see in the dark quite well, so that's a bit of a, an advantage to HTC here. We're seeing just general things that you'd expect from a high-end smartphone, like slow motion capture in the video mode and also 4K video capturing as well. On the front, we're seeing a five megapixel camera that's optically stabilized. Now this is quite interesting to see OIS on the front facing camera and this produces quite decent images in low light, although I don't think it's all that outstanding compared to other smartphone cameras, selfie cameras. It's pretty typical. So HTC has generally improved the overall camera setup on the HTC 10. And I'm pretty happy overall compared to the One M9 in particular. The camera though isn't the only thing about the HTC 10 that's worth discussing. We're seeing a fantastic unibody metal design on this handset that makes it look premium, it makes it feel premium, and this is exactly what I want to see on high-end smartphones. The use of aluminium here looks fantastic, and that shiny bevel around the edge is quite an interesting design choice that HTC has made, but I think it looks really good on this smartphone. The entire back is curved perfectly, and the way that HTC has seamlessly transitioned the metal into the glass on the front makes this device really comfortable to hold. A lot of other minor things have been done really well throughout the HTC 10's design. The antenna bands that run through the aluminium back panel actually look really good even though they break up that solid piece of metal on the back. The way that HTC has given a texture to the power button on the right hand side makes it easy to distinguish from the volume rocker when you're not looking. And also the USB-C port on the bottom, I really like seeing USB-C on smartphones and it's no exception here on the HTC 10. That said, not every aspect of the HTC 10's build is fantastic. I think the front panel design is a little bit standard and doesn't really stand out from the crowd, whereas the back panel is the real show of the HTC 10. And the lack of boom sound speakers is definitely a disappointing regression coming from the HTC One M9. We're still getting stereo speakers on the HTC 10, but it's a combination of a speaker on the bottom as well as the in-call speaker, and just doesn't sound as good as the previous speaker systems that HTC has included on their premium smartphones. The front-facing speaker that would normally be below the display for boom sound has been replaced by a fingerprint sensor, and I think this is a pretty decent inclusion here. I love seeing a fingerprint sensor for security. This one is fast and accurate, although I would prefer to see it on the back of this handset so we could still see that boom sound speaker assembly included on this device. There's not a whole lot to say about the display. It's a 5.2 inch 1440p LCD. It looks great. It has fairly decent brightness, although not as good as the G5. So it can be a little bit difficult to see outdoors. We're getting pretty decent color performance. There's an sRGB mode in the display settings. So if you want color accurate performance, simply switch it to that mode. And the vibrant mode makes things look pretty good in general. The Super LCD technology also delivers fantastic viewing angles. So there's no real complaints there. And I was also pretty happy with the contrast ratio, which exceeds some of the other LCDs that I've recently been testing. 
There's also not a whole lot to say about the performance of the HTC 10. It once again uses a Snapdragon 820 SoC, which I first reviewed in the LG G5. The HTC 10 is around 60 to 70% faster than the HTC One M9, which uses Snapdragon 810 SoC, but we're not seeing the same throttling concerns as we saw from that SoC, thanks to much better power management in this particular device. Other hardware in this device includes pretty typical things like Wi-Fi AC, Category 9 LTE, 4GB of RAM, and 32GB of internal NAND, which I found to be pretty fast in my testing, although you also get a micro SD card slot for expanding upon that storage. We're also seeing interesting things like AirPlay support. I think this is the first Android device that includes support for Apple's streaming protocol straight out of the box, and I was pretty impressed with the battery life. It's pretty decent from this device, which packs a 3000mAh battery. I think HTC also deserves a fair bit of praise for the software that's gone into the HTC 10. It is still a skinned version of Android 6.0, but it's the first skin that I've seen on an Android device in a long time that isn't completely terrible in one way or another. HTC has placed a strong focus on reducing the bloatware and duplicate apps on this device, so we're seeing things like just one app store, just one browser, and just one gallery, and this really reduces the confusion for end users. They don't need to see any of those annoying select this app pop-up dialogues. There are still features like Blink Feed included in this OS, but you can simply disable that feature if you don't like it. And the general style HTC has used around the operating system fits quite well with the general look and feel of Android, and it's very consistent throughout the operating system. System, so there's no real complaints for me there. That's not to say that HTC's software skin is perfect though. We're not seeing any really clever or innovative features throughout the software because HTC has been more focused on reducing feature bloat. And I do applaud them for this, but smartphones like the Galaxy S7 and G5 do have a few more features throughout their software that could come in handy. I'm also not a huge fan of the home screen layout only being a 4x4 grid. I think the information isn't particularly dense there, and a 5x5 grid option would come in handy, although HTC does include quite comprehensive theming features, which I always enjoy seeing. And this brings me to the end of my review of the HTC 10, and I think this is a real return to form for HTC, whose past flagship smartphones have been pretty disappointing and haven't really stood up to the likes of Samsung and LG in the high-end market segment of Android devices. In general, I think this device is a bit better than the LG G5 because it includes better polish around the hardware and software aspects that are so important. I think it really gives Samsung and their Galaxy S7 some solid competition. Whether you choose the S7 or the HTC 10 is up to you. I think both are fantastic devices, although I think the pricing might hurt HTC a little bit with their 10 because it comes in at $50 more expensive than the Galaxy S7 unlocked and outright. If this was $50 to $100 cheaper, I would certainly be recommending the HTC 10 but if you can find a good deal on maybe the S7 or even the G5, if it becomes a bit cheaper, HTC might run into some issues with their pricing there. But generally, I'm really happy with the HTC 10. I think it's a fantastic device and a real return to form for HTC when they so badly need it. So I hope you all enjoyed this review of the HTC 10. Don't forget to check out the full review on techspot.com where we have performance benchmarks, battery benchmarks, display benchmarks. It's all worth checking out if you want an in-depth analysis of this device. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because there are more video reviews coming in the future. Thanks everyone, this has been a TechSpot video review.